Hello friends. So today would be the final lecture on the module of um, radiation heat transfer. In the last three classes, we have actually studied the basics of electromagnetic radiation. We understood the importance of spectral and directional variation of uh, radiation and uh, their effect, defined the radiation intensity and learned how to relate the emission of radiation from a surface in a particular direction and wavelength to the total emission. We also look at, looked at uh, the gray diffuse assumption and in the last lecture we were actually looking at uh, the radiative exchange between pairs of surfaces and we defined what we call the radiation u factor which is actually a fraction of the energy that is emitted by a given surface that arrives on another surface and we found that this fraction is entirely dependent only on the geometry and so it can be called the u factor or the configuration factor. And we also looked at the rules that can be used to calculate u factors uh, from one another. So the basic formula for u factor is by integration over the surface areas a quantity which is cos theta 1 cos theta 2 into da 1 da 2 by pi s square. But then once the integral for a particular surface has been arrived at, the u factors of related quantities can be easily calculated. Okay, so, this is basically what uh, we were uh, looking at in the previous class. In today's class, we will uh, spend some time understanding the radiative exchange between surfaces that form an enclosure, a closed enclosure. Okay. In the last class also, we made a mention about closed enclosures in uh, defining radiation view factors that if I have an enclosure of n surfaces which is completely closed, then the emission from one particular surface will have to reach one or the other surface in the enclosure. That is basically we understood the enclosure. The enclosure is completely closed from all sides. So, if there is emission from one surface, it will be intercepted by one or the other surfaces of the enclosure. This is what we understood. Now, in today's class, using the radiative exchange between two surfaces, we will try to derive an expression for radiative exchange in an enclosure and arrive at a method for solving such problems and use that result to understand how we can um, calculate the radiative exchange between two surface enclosures in two surface enclosures where there are only two surfaces that could close the enclosure. Okay. So that is the uh, idea with uh, today's lecture and we will have a few a couple of examples which are very practically relevant. So, that is the theme of uh, today's uh, talk and the summary of today's talk. So, now let us move on to uh, understand radiative exchange in enclosures. Okay. So, let us look at um, the presentation screen now, the board, white board screen rather. Okay. So, suppose I have a gray diffuse surface, then the energy that is coming on it does not get transmitted because it is an opaque surface. Okay. It can either get absorbed or get reflected. Okay. So, normally for any surface absorption fraction plus reflection fraction plus transmission fraction add up to 1 in this case since there is no transmission the tau component is 0 so rho plus alpha which is the sum of the fraction of the energy reflected plus the fraction of the energy absorbed on the surface add up to 1 now since it's a gray diffuse surface We know that its emission is uniform in all directions and, uh, and therefore 
epsilon lambda prime in any direction is actually equal to epsilon which is the grade it used which is the integral quantity which is the so this is the directional spectral emissivity and this is the hemispherical total emissivity and these two would be equal there is a result called a Kirchhoff's law in radiation Kirchhoff's law you must have seen also in electrical circuitry etc this is another Kirchhoff's law which is the same Kirchhoff but uh, another law in radiation heat transfer which basically does fundamental energy balance of an opaque surface in an enclosure or an opaque enclosure and derives a result which says epsilon prime lambda is equal to alpha prime lambda which is nothing but a radiative energy balance between emitting uh, emission and absorption of a surface it basically says the directional spectral emissivity is also equal to the directional spectral absorptivity. Since it is a gray diffuse surface, this is equal to epsilon which is the hemispherical total emissivity and this is equal to alpha which is the hemispherical total absorptivity. So these two would be equal. Okay. So according to Kirchhoff's law then epsilon and alpha would be equal. So if I say uh, alpha plus rho is 1 it also means epsilon plus rho equal to 1 or the reflected cofraction of radiation will be equal to 1 minus epsilon. Okay. So this is the result that we will be using in uh, the analysis of uh, gray diffuse enclosure surfaces. Each of the surfaces is opaque and therefore the transmission is 0 and each of the surfaces is gray diffuse and therefore epsilon equal to alpha that gives me for each surface the fraction of energy reflected from the surface would be equal to 1 minus epsilon. So if I look at the total energy leaving this surface, it will be due to emission and due to reflection. Okay. So the energy that is leaving a particular surface is leaving because the surface is emitting radiation and also the surface is reflecting oncoming radiation. And therefore, we can define a quantity which is the amount of energy leaving a surface by all factors okay, because of all reasons, then it will actually be equal to the reflected fraction and the emission emitted fraction of uh, radiation. So we can write that using a quantity called radiosity. Radiosity is the amount of energy leaving a surface per unit area due to radiation. So this can be written as the sum of the energy emitted which will be E plus this is the emissive power right? plus uh, 1 minus rho uh, sorry which will be rho times G. So if a surface is surface I, EI is the emissive power of surface I, then EI is the energy leaving the surface due to emission per unit area and if GI is the amount of energy arriving on a surface due to radiation from various other surfaces, then GI is called the irradiation. We have looked at it in one of the earlier, earlier lectures and EI is called the emissive power. So EI is the energy leaving the surface due to emission per unit area and GI is the energy arriving on unit area of a surface by radiation from other surfaces. Rho is the fraction of that energy reflected. So this EI plus Rho GI is the amount of energy leaving the surface per unit area due to radiation which will be 
fractionally by due to emission and fractionally due to reflection. This quantity we call it as the radiosity Ji. So Ji is equal to Ei plus rho Gi. Now this can be written as epsilon I Ebi because that is the definition of uh, emissivity, hemispherical total emissivity epsilon I that is the ratio of Ei and Ebi. Okay, so I can write Ei as epsilon I Ebi and we can write rho I as 1 minus epsilon I multiplied by Gi. Okay. So this is the definition of a quantity called radiosity which is the amount of energy leaving unit area of a surface due to radiation which has contributions from emission and from reflection. Now using this relationship I should be able to write the expression for um, Gi in terms of Ji and Ebi which we will be using a little later. So I can write here Gi is equal to Ji minus epsilon i ebi divided by 1 minus epsilon i okay so this is a result which we will be using a little later from the definition of radiosity okay so let us keep this now if um, q dot is the net energy leaving the surface due to radiation see just compare it with uh, the definition of radiosity it is the amount of energy leaving a surface due to radiation okay this does not discount or subtract the energy arriving on it Okay, so that is the next thing that we are going to define. This is Q dot I, which is equal to uh, energy leaving the surface this is also per unit area. So energy leaving minus energy arriving. Okay, all per unit area. So this energy leaving is nothing but Ji minus energy arriving is nothing but Gi. Uh, sorry, this uh, capital Q dot is not per unit area. This capital Q dot is the total energy that is. So this will basically be uh, Ji minus Gi multiplied by Ai. So this is Q dot I which is the net energy leaving a surface due to radiation. Okay. This is Ji which is the energy emitted plus reflected by a surface which is leaving a surface and Gi is what is coming onto a surface. So net leaving is leaving minus arriving. So that is these two is per unit area multiplied by Ai will give me the total energy that is leaving a surface. Okay. Now if I substitute here for Gi from the previous expression that we had kept here, this expression then we can eliminate Gi from that expression and uh, we will get uh, this is equal to Ai multiplied by uh, Ji minus Ji minus epsilon I Ebi divided by 1 minus epsilon I. Now take the uh, 1 minus epsilon I below and so this will become 1 minus epsilon I minus uh, 1 minus epsilon i into ji minus ji. So if I simplify that, I will get ai epsilon i by 1 minus epsilon i multiplied by uh, ebi minus ji. Okay, this is what I will get. This I can also write as ebi minus ji divided by 1 minus epsilon i divided by epsilon i a i uh, 
okay this is q dot i and this is a quantity which we normally use as uh, analogous to electrical uh, analogy this q i again uh, is analogous to the current and e b i and j i are analogous to a potential difference the e b i minus j i so this uh, resistance is often called the surface resistance of uh, a gray diffuse surface 1 minus epsilon i divided by epsilon i j i. So this is called the surface resistance of uh, a gray diffuse surface. So we can uh, write it as if there is a surface here uh, whose uh, black body emissive power is E b i and this is j i which is the energy actually leaving the surface that is because the surface has an emissivity epsilon i and therefore the surface resistivity is 1 minus epsilon i divided by epsilon i a i okay so this is the electrical analogy for this process so the energy that is leaving there is this q i okay so this is a electrical analogy for the surface resistance or the internal resistance of a surface okay so in case the surface is black uh, so you have this is e b i okay and uh, this is j i and there is a resistance which is 1 minus epsilon i by epsilon i a i and the heat flux leaving is q dot i which has given us E B i minus J i divided by this resistance. This you can call it as R i if you want. Okay, so this is called the internal surface resistance of the body. Now, in case the surface is black, then this resistance is zero, and J i and E B i are the same. What do I mean? The surface is black, and therefore it will not reflect any radiation that comes. Okay, it will only have the emitted component. So, if I go back to the uh, definition of uh, radiosity, the radiosity is E i plus rho i g i. Okay. So, in which case where epsilon i is 1, this term would disappear. Okay. So, there will be no reflection of any oncoming radiation. All the oncoming radiation will be absorbed and therefore, the energy leaving the surface will only be this where epsilon i will be equal to 1. So, j i will be equal to E b i. So, that is the uh, relationship. Do not try to substitute into this because then you will end up getting out divided by 0. That is because uh, E b i minus j i is also 0 and 1 minus epsilon i is also uh, this epsilon i is also 1 and therefore, 1 minus epsilon i is also 0. So, you get a divide by 0 here. So, do not use this expression, but for a black body or a black surface j i is the same as E B I okay, and therefore, uh, the surface resistance R i will actually be 0 okay. and uh, in uh, such a case, the Q dot i will actually be only the emitted quantity which is going to be equal to E B I A i. Okay. So, this will be your uh, expression for a black surface which is a special case in which case the surface resistance itself is non-existent and you can directly have the q i leaving from this to the other surfaces. Okay. This is one expression which is what we call as the surface, the surface resistance. The second expression that we will have is for radiative exchange. So, suppose I have a surface i and another surface j okay, which are relating to each other. Then the uh, q dot from i to j will actually be equal to the energy leaving i and arriving on j minus the energy leaving j and arriving on i. So, the radiative exchange between these two surfaces alone will be energy leaving i and arriving on j. What will that be? That will be j i that is the energy leaving i per unit area into uh, a i which is the total energy leaving uh, surface i and f i j will be the fraction of the energy that leaves i that reaches j. So, this is the energy leaving i and reaching j 
minus in the same way energy leaving j and uh, coming to i will be j j into a j f j i is that correct so this is the expression for energy exchange between these two surfaces and since by reciprocity a i f i j and a j f j i are equal you can write this as for surface i to j a i f i j multiplied by j i minus j j okay so this is the energy uh, exchange between surface i and surface j now if i want to look at an enclosure which has multiple surfaces okay then the energy leaving this and arriving on another surface is this one energy leaving the other surface and reaching this is this one so the total q dot i that i was talking about the net energy leaving surface i will be a summation over j of q dot i to j okay so this is the expression that i can need to do so i'll need to sum up this expression over all j of the enclosure in order to get q dot i i already have one expression for q dot i i will now write another expression for q dot i okay so the other expression then for q dot i will be q dot i is summation over all j of a i f i j into j i minus j j and since a i f i j is common i can take this out this is a i f i j summation over all j of j i minus j okay so let me write that here um summation over all j of a i f i j with the summation over all j of j i minus j j hmm that's a mistake the f i j also depends on the j value so i needs to be let's uh, just delete this page okay and uh, come to start writing this all over again so q dot i will be summation of a i f i j into j i minus j j which i write uh, in terms of so this is summation over all j a i can be taken out so it is a i into summation of f i j multiplied by j i minus j j okay because uh, the summation should include f i j inside the loop because it's a function of j okay so this is the second expression that i have so now i also have the qj uh, as equal to ebj or e qi rather ebi minus ji divided by Uh, one minus epsilon i by epsilon i a i. Okay, so now this is this. So what do I see? If I have a surface i, from that there is this internal resistance. So this is E B i, and this is J i, and this is one minus epsilon i by epsilon i a i. 
and from this I have multiple resistances that go one to each J each of these equal to J I F I J through a J J okay so if you look at uh, an enclosure from every surface there is radiation to every other surface and the resistance between any two surfaces J I and J J would be given by 1 over A I F I J. Okay, so if I write this as um, uh, divided by 1 over A I F I J, then it will be summation of all of these quantities, each of which is equal to J I minus J J divided by 1 over A I F I J. So this resistance actually is given as 1 over A I F I J. So this is the electrical phenology model that we will understand and then for each of those surfaces there can be radiative exchange from that surface to the other surface and so on and uh, there can also be the individual surface resistances of that surface this will be E B J for uh, a given J so if this is J1 this is E B J1 if this is J then this is E B J. So for each surface there will be one surface resistance which will be given by 1 minus epsilon j by epsilon j a j and there will be multiple resistances that connect to or connect to each surface to each of the other surfaces so like this and so on and each of that would be written in terms of the difference between the j's of those two surfaces divided by a i f i j for that pair of surfaces. So this forms a network for an n surface enclosure if I have an n surface enclosure there will be a network problem like the electrical network problem that you would have okay if the heat flux going to any particular surface is zero then this uh, gets dummied and the circuit can be simplified without uh, that uh, and when uh, the uh, surface resistance is zero then directly this becomes the E B value the location where the uh, J's will become E B instead of uh, an additional resistance there or this resistance will become 0 where it is a black surface and so on. So you can actually write a, a radiation network uh, in the form of an electrical uh, resistance network and solve it using techniques that are existing for that. Okay. Mathematically we will have uh, these expressions. So Q dot I is actually equal to uh, A I into summation over j of f i j into j i minus j j this is one expression that I have the second expression that uh, we'll have is e b i which is nothing but sigma t i to the power of 4 which will be equal to j i plus so you are writing this from um, the the other uh, expression that uh, we just wrote which is uh, this one okay so in this I can write uh, E B i is equal to J i plus 1 minus epsilon by epsilon i A i into Q i okay and uh, the Q i itself is uh, the summation of uh, J i minus J j so that is basically what I am trying to write uh, plus um, 1 minus epsilon i by epsilon i a i into summation of f i j into j i minus j j. So this is the second expression that I have. So I can write one such expression for each of the surfaces. Now the requirement is that either the heat flux leaving a surface needs to be known or the temperature of the surface needs to be known so that there is only one unknown per surface okay so for each i there will be either the q dot which is unknown or the eb or the ti that is unknown okay so then there will be n equations in n unknowns whichever surface i know q i will write this expression so the left hand side is known and whichever surface I know the temperature I will write this expression so that the left hand side is known. So there will be n equations in n j's j i 
i is equal to 1 to n will be the unknowns okay so i write these two uh, expressions one of these two expressions for each of the n surfaces then i get n equations in n values of j solve them i'll get all the values of j once i know the, all the values of j i can find out uh, if i know the q value then i uh, i have to find out the t then i can substitute uh, into this expression and get the value of t and if i know the value of t i have uh, I, I can substitute in this expression to find the value of q so the surfaces for which t is known q can be found surfaces where can which q is known t can be found and that is the solution of your radiation network this is the same thing that you will also also be solving using the resistance network okay so it becomes an n equation n unknown problem for an n surface enclosure okay so this is how we uh, solve uh, radiative network problems now the uh, n surface enclosure is actually looking a little intimidating so why don't we just simplify it for a two surface enclosure okay. so suppose the enclosure had only two surfaces then how would this simplify to okay so we'll take two examples of this one is of uh, radiation shields we have talked about uh, shielding of radiation for spacecraft for example so you have super insulations where you have multi layer uh, insulations so we'll see how shielding of radiation is going to help in cutting the heat flux okay uh, it's not just spacecraft but it can be anything it can be even for example measurement of temperature from a hot source or a flame okay so uh, suppose i have a flame okay and i put a temperature measuring instrument into it to measure the temperature what actually happens is that this probe becomes hot and it starts radiating to the surrounding atmosphere okay and the walls that are surrounding the room so for example if i keep a bunsen burner on the table of the class and i put a, a thermocouple to measure its temperature the walls of the room and the floor of the room the ceiling of the room are all at room temperature okay so this thermocouple would radiate to all of those places and therefore eventually reach an equilibrium temperature which is not equal to the flame temperature but it is slightly lower okay that slightly can be different for different values of temperature if this temperature is very high then this slightly can be as high as about 200 kelvin so if the uh, thermocouple is put inside the flame what it reads is the temperature of this bead and if the temperature of the bead is not equal to the temperature of the flame then what you are measuring is wrong in which case normally we put a shield around it okay so what is normally done is to take a ceramic tube okay which is a very small diameter uh, tube and insert the thermocouple probe so you have a junction of the thermocouple you insert it into a tube which is made of ceramic okay the ceramic has a very low emissivity okay now this whole thing you put it inside this so whatever this emits will go to this tube and the tube has a very low emissivity and therefore less energy is emitted to the surroundings in which case the bead remains at a temperature which is closer to the flame temperature and therefore it can be measured so this is one example of shielding of radiation the other example of shielding of radiation is shielding the spacecraft from the deep space so that it doesn't lose heat that rapidly so we'll take those examples as um, examples of radiation enclosure okay so um, let us say there is an infinitely large uh, surface one and infinitely large surface two which are emitting to each other okay then it's uh, this is for a one dimensional approximation so the radiation escaping through the sides can be neglected if they are substantially large and then you can consider this uh, enclosure to be a two surface enclosure this is one way a two surface enclosure can be constructed another way a two surface enclosure can be constructed is you have one small surface and another large surface is completely surrounding it so this is one and this is two so in the example of a thermocouple this can be surface one which is the surface of the thermocouple bead and two can be the walls of the room which is uh, second thermocouple okay so the second surface which is like a completely enclosing this 
So it's a two surface enclosure because no radiation leaving this can go anywhere else other than the walls of the room. So this is one example of a two surface enclosure. This is a second example of a two surface enclosure. So let us look at both of these. We we'll look at this in the context of radiation shields. in spacecraft okay so suppose this surface one is the surface of the spacecraft and surface two is uh, let us say the deep space okay so the amount of energy that goes from here to here will uh, then depend on the resistances at these two so uh, we have seen suppose i have surface one and surface two there can be an internal resistance of this surface then there is a resistance between these two and internal resistance of the surface. So this will be 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 A1. This will be 1 minus epsilon 2 by epsilon 2 A2. And this will be 1 over A1 F12. This is what we had uh, studied in uh, the previous analysis in the thing that we said here that between any two surfaces there will be uh, this is the surface resistance and between any two surfaces we will have a resistance which is given by 1 by, okay, one by AI FIB. Right? So that is what we are trying to apply here to a two surface enclosure. So there will be a 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 A1 on this, this, is this surface and on this surface where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are the emissivities of these two surfaces. In the case of deep space this would be a black body at close to absolute zero temperature let us say. So this epsilon 2 uh, quantity, this resistance will be non-existent. So you will only have this and this and this would be uh, EB2 which would be 0. Okay, So that is your uh, radiation losses in deep space. Now if uh, suppose there is a certain amount of Q that is going because of this resistance, suppose I put a radiation shield which has an emissivity epsilon in between. So then what will happen? There will be two uh, circuits set up in series. Okay. So then what will happen? So suppose this is surface 1, this is the radiation shield and this is surface 2. So I will okay, I'll write this as 3 and 3 okay. and let us say the thickness of the okay, shield is very small. So then you will have uh, surface 1 here and there is an internal surface resistance of 1 then 1 3 and this is surface 3 the resistance so this is 3 so this is 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 a1 and uh, this is 1 over a1 f12 f13 okay and now this will be 1 minus epsilon 3 by epsilon 3 a3 and the same thing will repeat on the other side 1 minus epsilon 3 divided by epsilon 3 a3. So suppose this is epsilon 3 on this side as well as this side, both sides. So you write this and then you will have 1 over a1 a3 f3 2 and then you will have the internal resistance of so this is a2, uh, this is uh, eb2 so this is 2 and this will have 1 minus epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 2 a2. Okay. So now since these are very large areas, let us say a1 equal to a2 equal to a3 which are very large areas. Okay. So the areas can be removed from uh, these expressions. Okay. So you can actually look at the heat transfer per unit area. Suppose I take a unit area here. So all these A's can be taken to be 1. So this will be 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1. This will be 1 resistance. And uh, there will be a 1 over uh, F13 here. And this uh, will become this and so on. And since these are parallel infinite surfaces, the F13 and F12 are both 1. Okay, So this will be 1 and this will be 1 because these are two parallel surfaces any energy that leaves one surface will always have to reach the other surface and since it's a plane surface it doesn't reach itself again so this will be 1 so what you will get 
is a 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus epsilon 3 by epsilon 3. So, uh, for uh, infinite surfaces, if I try to write this together, we will have uh, 1 minus epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 by epsilon 2. This is for uh, without the radiation shield. If I try to simplify this, I will get uh, uh, 1 by epsilon 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. Okay. So, what should I get here? Minus 1 plus 1 and minus 1. So, you will get a 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. So, this is the uh, sum of all radiations between any two surfaces. When I introduce, so this is uh, between 2, if I introduce a shield, then it becomes 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 3 minus 1 plus 1 by epsilon 3 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. Okay, so this is the additional resistance that um, I will put. Now, suppose all of these epsilons are same okay, in this parallel uh, system. Suppose epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 are all equal. Then very easily you can see that the resistance offered to the radiation has actually doubled. So, the heat loss Q dot would suppose if I call this as R, then uh, in this particular case, this is R, this is going to be equal to EB1 minus EB2 divided by R in this first case, in the first case. And in the second case, it is going to be equal to this is Q dot uh, without shield, in the Q dot with shield will actually be equal to EB1 minus EB2 divided by 2R. Okay. So, even if all the epsilons are equal, you will get a, a half of the heat flux cut by putting one shield. Okay. Suppose we take epsilon 3 to be very, very small. Okay. I put a radiation shield. So, I select the material such that the shield has a very low epsilon. Then, the resistance that is going to get added to the original quantity, which is 1 minus 1 by epsilon plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1, you are going to have a 2 by epsilon 3 that will get added, okay. Uh, and there will be also, there, there's this epsilon 3, if it is a small quantity, then 1 by epsilon 3 is very large. So, 2 by epsilon 3 is a very large quantity. So, the resistance will be substantially increased over the original resistance, and therefore, instead of 2R, I will have a much larger quantity than R. right? So, then the radiation can be cut down by a substantial extent. Okay? And if I put multiple layers of that resistance, so, so this is 1 uh, and this is let us say 2, I put multiple layers of this resistance so that they are not in contact with each other. Each time the resistance gets cut down by a substantial amount if this epsilon is much less than 1. Okay. So, then if I put multi layers of such insulation, then the radiation gets cut down from one stage to the other by a much, sub much more substantial value and therefore, the overall resistance between 1 and 2 increases multifold and therefore, the heat flux or the heat losses that happen from 1 to 2 can be cut down by a really large extent. And that is what uh, is normally done in MLIs, what they call as multi-layer insulation or multi-layer super insulation, which is what is used in spacecraft insulation. Okay. So, this is one example of uh, application of your um, this on uh, the energy uh, loss shield for radiation. The second example that I talked about is thermocouple measurement. high temperatures. Okay. So, there we said that because the thermocouple itself is going to be hot and it is going to radiate to the surrounding, it needs shielding in order to prevent that heat loss. So, let us uh, look at uh, temperature correction. Okay. 
So, suppose this is my thermocouple and I am trying to measure a certain Tg which is the temperature of the gases in a flame. Okay. So, what actually happens is this gas which is flowing over the thermocouple B is convectively transferring heat to the B because it is in contact. So, suppose the temperature of the bead is Tb then H multiplied by area of the bead multiplied by Tg minus Tb is the rate at which heat is transferred to the bead. Okay. Now, when the bead is kept in the flame, it reaches steady state by losing heat to the surroundings and uh, therefore this heat gain by the bead will actually be equal to the heat loss from the bead and the heat loss from the bead can be written in terms of the radiative transfer. So, if I write the two surface enclosure as uh, I drew in uh, this page, okay, on th this page, this is the thermocouple bead and this is the surroundings, okay. So, here I can write uh, resistance network, okay. So, these are three, three uh, resistances in that uh, sequence. So, then I will be able to write, let us say T B to the power of 4 minus T walls to the power of 4 multiplied by uh, sigma. Okay, So, this is your uh, E B 1 minus E B 2 divided by, so this is the, uh, the amount of heat loss that is happening from the uh, flame to the walls, the heat exchange between the flame and the uh, walls, so from the between the bead and the walls divided by 1 minus epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 1 a 1 plus uh, 1 over a 1 f 1 2 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 2 a 2. So, this is an example where the walls have a much larger area as compared to the thermocouple bead. So, a 2 is much larger than a 1. So, if I take out this a 1 and take it here, then what happens? this a 1 disappears, this a 1 disappears okay, and I get a, a 1 by a 2 here and this a 1 by a 2 is much less than 1. Okay. So, and since this is a, an enclosure like this, this is 1 and this is 2, all the energy that leaves 1 will have to reach 2 and therefore, this F12 will be equal to 1. Okay. So, if I have these 3 terms in the resistance, one of the terms is multiplied by a very small term and therefore, that term can be dropped. Okay. The other 2 when get added, you will get a 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 plus this is also going to be 1. So, uh, you get Oh, sorry, this is minus 1. So, 1 by epsilon 1 minus 1 plus 1. So, these two get cancelled. I get only a 1 by epsilon 1. So, these two, look at this term is negligible because a 1 by a 2 is very small and therefore, the other two terms add up to 1 by epsilon 1. So, this actually q dot actually becomes equal to epsilon 1 a 1 into sigma t b to the power of 4 minus t wall to the power of 4. Okay. So, that is the uh, heat loss uh, that is happening from 1 to 2. So, I can write that expression here epsilon 1 a 1 multiplied by this a 1 is nothing but the area of the bead. This is area of the bead. Okay. So, epsilon 1 a 1 this is area of the bead into sigma t b to the power of 4 minus t wall to the power of 4. Okay. So, now this gives you an expression in which the only unknown is t b which can be evaluated. Okay. So, this then tells you what is the temperature of the bead um, if I know the gas temperature. In the other case when I am measuring temperature I am trying to measure T g but the thermocouple bead reads T b. So, I know T b but I do not know T g. So, T g is the only unknown which can be evaluated from this. This is a radiation correction that uh, we apply. So, uh, uh, what I will get is T g 
is equal to T B plus uh, 1 over H multiplied by epsilon uh, B into sigma T B to the power of 4 minus T 1 to the power of 4. Okay, we are basically getting it from this expression. So, I can um, take the H A there, A would get A would get cancelled. Okay, so you would get um, epsilon sigma T B to the power of 4 by minus T infinity to the power T T all to the power of 4 divided by H plus T B will be the correction. Okay, so did I miss anything here? No, that's right. So, epsilon sigma T B to the power of 4 to the T infinity divided by H will be the correction. So, the B, T B will be the reading of your thermocouple and T G is the temperature of the gas and that will be given by this. Okay. So, if the emissivity of the bead is large, okay, that is one reason why this difference can be large. Now, or if uh, H is very small, that is the heat transfer coefficient between the flame and the uh, bead is very small, in both cases the correction can be big. And when the temperature is, uh, Tb is larger, Tb to the power of 4 minus T infinity to the power of 4 increases, then again the correction can be large. Okay. So as I said, when I am measuring a flame temperature which is like close to 1000 degrees Celsius, I can easily get a difference of about 200 degrees Celsius. Okay. So if your thermocouple bead leads, reads 800, then the flame temperature can well be 1000 and that can be corrected using this method of correction. Okay. So these are two simple examples of um, the radiation uh, exchange calculations for simple two surface enclosures. Okay. Now, um, that is what I wanted to transact in uh, the module of radiation. So, what did we study in today's uh, lecture? We looked at the radiative exchange between any two surfaces that are uh, uh, radiating to each other. So, what is the net energy leaving a surface uh, and reaching the other surface? We tried to define them in terms of uh, uh, the quantities that we had learned earlier. We had learned about uh, emissivity, absorptivity, reflectivity. We tried to put them in perspective for a gray diffuse surface. We wrote that rho is equal to 1 minus epsilon and accordingly we were able to get expressions for the energy leaving a surface and energy arriving on the other surface. Using that, we constructed the pass simultaneous system of equations for solving the radiation exchange problem, uh, which can be solved either using an electrical analogy and uh, Kirchhoff's uh, laws of electrical resistance and circuit theory. We can also solve it using a system of simultaneous equations, uh, in which there can be a mixture of surfaces for which heat flux is known or uh, temperature is known, and the other quantity can be determined for this expression. Now. From that analysis, we simplified it to a uh, two surface enclosure and took two examples. One example is that of radiation shield and we saw, showed that how using a low emissivity material as a shield can substantially cut down radiation and using multiple layers of those can practically eliminate the heat leakage from a surface to the surroundings. And we also looked at how to correct for the uh, radiation uh, losses from a thermocouple. And I also mentioned that if I use a low emissivity shield between the thermocouple and the surroundings, which I did not do calculations for, but can be can be done in the similar fashion as I showed in the other case, that you can substantially eliminate the heat losses from the thermocouple bead to the surrounding walls and therefore substantially reduce the error in uh, temperature measurement that accrues from there. So we will stop here, which brings us to the close of uh, radiation heat transfer. The reading material for radiation heat transfer is already available to you on uh, your Moodle page and we will soon upload uh, a tutorial sheet on uh, radiation. Uh, I will also upload a tutorial sheet on conduction and the solutions for the tutorial sheet number 4 in the next couple of days and now let us work on the tutorial sheet on conduction as well as radiation together. Okay. So, we will uh, stop at this point, continue the uh, topics uh, with uh, convective heat transfer starting from the next lecture.